And uh, I want to look at Peter's walk of faith on the water. The walk, the word walk in the Bible so often symbolizes the way we live, the way we act, and the way we conduct ourselves in a certain way. It has reference to the fact that our lives as Christians is a journey. And that life itself is a pilgrimage. And that the Christian person is one who is traveling. We are in a transitory life. Okay, so we're going, going through this life to a better one. And so to walk by faith is to live in the confident expectation of things that are to come. We live in a world where we are influenced by what we see around us. We agree with that one? Yes. Now, I could ask you another question, and I am going to. What do you think those things are? Ooh. Is that a difficult question? No, it's not difficult. Because we live in a world where we are surrounded by wealth and power and possessions. And this influences the way we live because when we strive for some of those things or we strive to a, you know, a degree of some of those things. And these are the things that the world can give us. However, as Christians, Scripture teaches us to look beyond this material world with a conviction that believes there is a better life in a better place. Do you think that's true? I don't think so. Why? Why? Sorry? You haven't seen it? No, 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 no. You're right, but not that. I believe that God doesn't reward us with a better thing. God rewards us with the best thing, yes. So, you weren't wrong, but you weren't right, either. So, we live with this conviction that we believe there is a better life in the best place. To walk by faith means that we should familiarize ourselves with the promises that God gives to us. The Bible is filled with promises for believers. Reading the promises of God not only encourages us but nurtures our faith. Faith comes by hearing and believing. And what do we hear and believe? The Word of God. Many Christians have a misunderstanding of what faith is. Many believe that faith is some kind of power or force. They also have the misunderstanding that if we have sufficient faith, God will do whatever we ask him to do. Is that true? When we face a crisis, they try to move God into action with their faith. It is almost as if they want to use faith like a rope that they slip around God's neck to force their will on him. Or they use their faith like a button to nudge God into action. You press the button and God jumps up and he does whatever they ask. And when God doesn't come to the party, wow, they are bitterly disappointed with God because he has let them down. Their disappointment has some sad consequences. The first thing disappointed Christians do is they stop attending church. 
They may then also stop reading the Bible. And worse than everything else is they stop praying. What they fail to realize is that you need to have a promise from God to hang your faith on. Faith is the confidence that God will do whatever he has promised if it is within his will. If we look at our text from Matthew, the Bible says that disciples are in a storm and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the water. Have you ever seen anybody walk on the water yet? I haven't, I haven't. So don't feel bad about that. Maybe I'll tell you a little story about a dog. This guy had a little dog and he stayed on, on a lake, on the shore of a lake. And one night he was walking the dog and he threw a stick out into the water. And the dog ran on the water, picked up the stick and ran back out. And he was amazed. And the next night he called some of his friends and he threw the stick out. The dog ran on the water and ran back. And he said, isn't that miraculous? And the one guy said, no, your dog hasn't learned to swim. <laughs> When the disciples see a person walking on the water, they think it's a ghost. They are terrified. Humans don't walk on water, do they? Do they? No. Jesus reacts to their fear by telling them who he was or who he is and that they should not be afraid. Oh, our friend Peter then makes an unusual request. Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. I often think, I wonder what was going through Peter's mind when he said that. What was he thinking? Was he trying to show that he had more faith in Christ than the other disciples? Was Peter just being Peter, speaking without thinking? In reality, maybe the reason why Peter wanted to walk on the water was because he wanted to be closer to Jesus and safety. He realized the peril that they were facing by being in the boat. Peter's seafaring experience made him realize that being with Jesus on the water was probably a better option than being in the boat that was being battered in the storm. I am sure that the desire of most of you yesterday would be to have a closer relationship with Jesus. If we claim to walk by faith, we want to be as close to God as we can be. And in the same way, if you really want to get closer to Jesus, you have to walk by faith. There is no doubt that faith pleases God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. Walking by faith requires we, that we change our lifestyle. You cannot walk in faith in your old ways and still expect to get close to Jesus. Peter wanted to change his status from being in the boat to being nearer to Jesus. Peter probably had in mind what James has said in James chapter 4, verse 8. Come near to God, and he will be near to you. So why did Peter really want to walk on the water? Peter was going through a storm in his life, literally and figuratively. 
And this storm may want to step out in faith, to walk by faith, and to get closer to Jesus. Peter's desire to walk under the water was about testing his own faith. There are times in the church when storms must come to test us, to see if we will walk by faith and not by what we see. The test is whether your storm will draw you closer to Jesus. Many, many years ago, I think it was 1984, I wrote a song called uh, That's All I'm Asking For. And one of the lines in the song was, there is a storm in my heart. I'm so glad that storm has blown away now. Some people will be in a storm and yet they cannot get close to God. Not all the disciples in the boat identified with Peter's walk of faith. They were satisfied to remain in the boat. And some people are satisfied to stay in their comfort zone, satisfied to stay in the boat, whether they perish or not. Jesus expects us to step out of the boat and to trust him to save us. Now we've looked at faith and I've discussed a few points about faith and I just want to go through a few of the aspects of Peter's walk that could help us in our faith. The first one was the success in Peter's walk on water, of course. Matthew 14, 29 says, Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. Now, you know, when we read the story, we don't actually think that Peter did walk on the water. We focused on the fact that he lost his faith and he started, you know, sinking. But he actually did. So there was a level of success. You see, after Jesus told Peter to come, he immediately, remember that word, he immediately stepped out of the boat. We didn't wait for the second welcome. Peter did walk on the water towards Jesus before taking his eyes off Jesus. When he took his eyes off Jesus, he started looking at the waves that were pounding the boat. And at that moment, his faith failed him and he started sinking. Jesus said to Peter, come. And Peter's initial success was based on the premise that he believed the word of God. Peter began his walk on the water by faith in the word. And the word here in Matthew is the Greek word logos. And Jesus is logos. Jesus is the word. And if you go back to Genesis, you, you'll read, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. That was Jesus. And Peter believed and did this action because the word had told him to come. Peter's decision to step out of the world was based on just one word. Because he believed Jesus, the word. And despite the wind being strong and the waves high, Peter still stepped out on the word of the Lord. And there's a lesson for us in Peter's action. The church can always step out on the word of God. We can always stand on the word of God. And whenever God promises us in his word that he will hold us up, God will do whatever he says. God will edify us. We should stop sitting on the seats and start standing on the promises of God. You can always put your faith in the word of God and in nothing else. 
Man will always fail you. A human being walking on the water seems impossible. Yet to Peter, it was possible because he believed the word. Somehow, Peter knew that everything is possible to the person who believes. And the greatest thing that Peter teaches us here is that there was no danger in walking by faith. And so today, whatever you do, wherever you walk, there is no danger. Because God, you will be in God's hands. And then, I want to talk quickly about the sinking in his walk. There is a paradox in this event. We read that Peter started walking on the water. However, that was short-lived because he became afraid and started to sink. Matthew puts it like this. He says, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. How many times have you said that? Well, I did that on Friday. I wasn't well. I said to Opal, hey, you, I think you may have to do the sermon this morning. <laughs> but I cried out, Lord, save me. And he did. Here I am. When Peter saw the wind, he feared to cold. We could say that the wind blew his faith away. And this is an important lesson for us. Take your eyes off Jesus and you will fail. There is a reminder to us gathered here today. If you take your eyes off Jesus and focus on your circumstances, instead of on the Lord, you will start to sink when you should be walking tall. This is an old ploy of the bad guy, Mr. The Evil. You know that guy? He's somewhere here today. Yeah, Mr. The Evil is a clever, clever guy. He wants us to operate in our own strength instead of putting our trust in the Lord. The saving, there is a saving part to this story as well. We encounter not only Peter sinking, but then we also see Jesus reaching out and saving Peter. We should be grateful that God did not allow Peter to drown. <laughs> Our scripture would be so much poorer without Peter. As Peter was going down, he started praying. Do you believe that? Yeah, when he said, save me, Lord, <laughs> that was a prayer. Yeah. Scripture tells that Peter cried, saying, Lord, save me. I prayed that on Friday. Lord, save me. And even when Peter's faith got weak and trouble came, he prayed to the Lord. Lord, <coughs> save me. And Lord, save me was his prayer. It was amazing that through it all, he still had enough faith to put his trust in the Lord. Can you believe that? All this was happening in a split second. Can, I mean, you must realize this wasn't like over an hour or over two hours or over a whole evening. This was in a split second. Got out of the boat, walked, saw the water, started to drown. Lord, save me. How quick was that? You, you, you realize how quick that is. Yes, he still had enough faith to put his trust in the Lord. I am so glad to be part of the Sinex family. I'm so glad. And the reason for that is that I have no doubt that we have sufficient faith to keep on praying. And that's such a wonderful attribute that I've come to learn and to love about this family that I'm part of. Peter's faith may have been little, yet it was enough to get saved. And that must be a big lesson for us. But you know, Peter, 
uh, rather, uh, Jesus didn't let Peter off the hook. And he didn't let him off the hook easily either. No. After saving him from certain drowning, Peter scolded, uh, Jesus scolded Peter about the shallowness of his faith. And in Matthew 14, 31, he, Matthew relates the story as follows. He says, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, Jesus said, why did you doubt? Jesus couldn't understand that the Peter who had been around him, with him, seen all the things he had done, the miracles and everything, even healing Peter's mother-in-law, that same Peter had lost his faith, or was of so little faith. But while Peter's faith was lacking, let's give him some credit for having enough faith to walk as far as he did. I mean, if I tramped out, got out of the boat, I'd just go down. <laughs> Faith or no faith, I just go down. <laughs> so let's give Peter some credit for that. But Jesus wanted Peter to have a deeper faith to complete the walk, which is what Jesus wants of us, to have a deeper faith to complete our walk. By the time this had happened, Peter, like I said earlier, had been with Jesus for some time. And he had seen Jesus perform other miracles. And so there should have been no reason to doubt. Many of us have been walking with Jesus for a long time. And I would like to ask you to put your hands up because I want, would like to see everybody's hand, but I won't do that. I'll just trust. I'll just trust the statement. So many of us have been walking with Jesus for a very long time. And there's no doubt that we have witnessed the Lord make ways where there seem to be no way. And there I'm quoting a line from the song by Don Moen, God will make a way. We have come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. And he has yet to fail us. We cannot turn around now because we have come this far, walking by faith, and we must keep on walking by faith. And so I want to conclude by reminding us of a few basics of our faith. Firstly, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Secondly, we need to trust him in everything. Thirdly, to come near to God so that he will be near to us. To walk by faith and trust the Lord in all things. Now that may be sort of saying the same as I said in the, in, in the second one, to trust God in everything. But we have to walk by faith and trust the Lord in all things. And lastly, to attend church regularly. To pray un ceasingly and to make reading our Bible part of our daily living. Amen.